Hi, I'm Kelly O'Rourke Wall, licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm back again to continue our discussion on emotions. I hope that you've stuck with me this far and have learned how to recognize your emotions, allow yourself to feel them, even the difficult ones. And now is the exciting part in the emotional regulation process, figuring out the why behind the emotion. Now, I think this is the exciting part because, you know, through listening to our emotions, we really can start to begin to understand, you know, what's driving this emotion? You know, what need is it communicating? And, you know, how do we make healthy choices for ourselves? And to do that, we need to investigate the emotion. So how do we do that? Well, first, we need to understand how emotions are triggered. You know, Proverbs 23, 7 states, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And this is exactly true. And I just love when science finally catches up to what God has been saying all along. Now, this concept is actually explained by the cognitive triangle. So as the cognitive triangle illustrates here, you know, first we have a thought, then the feeling is experienced, and then we act on that feeling. So before we have an emotion, there's always a thought that triggers it. Uh, some think that the feeling comes first, but that's not so. You know, sometimes we just notice the emotion first, but a thought is always triggering the emotion. Don't believe me? Okay. Get angry right now. Just feel angry. Can't do it, right? Yeah, because in order to feel angry, you need to think angry thoughts. So our first step in investigating the emotion is to identify what it is that we're thinking. You know, this is actually the first step in taking thoughts captive. In 2 Corinthians 2, 5, the word says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So to take the thought captive, we need to identify it. Then we can demolish the arguments by holding it up to the word and what God says is true. So we can start by asking ourselves, you know, what just happened? You know, what is the event or experience that's triggering this emotion? And then we move on to the actual thought. You know, what did I just think? Now, I suggest writing it down. This makes it more concrete, really kind of separates it from ourselves and makes it easier to investigate. I'm actually including a worksheet for you that's going to walk you through each step of this process uh, you know, to guide you in investigating your thoughts. So next, we're going to go, we're actually going to put this thought on trial. Really look at it and ask ourselves, you know, is it, th is it true? You know, is this thought true? So to identify a, um, a thought that we want to keep, it needs to be both true and helpful. So is this thought true? Can we know for 100% that it's true. You know, some thoughts may seem true, but really aren't true. Uh, sometimes they can be a bit distorted. And psychologists have actually identified several ways that our thoughts can be distorted. And so here's a list of common distortions. Things like magnification. Are we blowing up this event in our minds, you know, really making it bigger than it actually is? Or are we minimizing it, really kind of downplaying it, saying, ah, it's not that big a deal, when, when really it might be a, a pretty big deal. You know, or are we catastrophizing? You know, are we thinking what's happened is just the end of the world? Or maybe we think because I'm feeling it, it must be true. And we call this emotional reasoning. My personal favorites are the shoulds. Oh, I should have do this. I sh oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, they should be doing this. Or they shouldn't be doing that. So look for any distortions. If the thought is distorted, we can look for a more accurate or true thought. So if it's not true, you know, we can just stop right there and let this thought go because we don't want to spin ourselves out on something that's not even true. But if it is true, you know, um, then we can move on to, is it helpful, right? So a better thought is both true and helpful. So let's say for example, you're running late to work or an important meeting. Okay, so that's the event, running late. Let's say the thought is, oh, I'm late. Oh my gosh, I'm late. You know, is it true? Yeah, you know, we're, we're running late, that's true. But is it helpful? By me reminding myself, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Is that helping me? I don't think so. You know, for me, that's just gonna stress me out. So that's not really helpful. 
So I can replace that thought with something like, yes, I am running late, but I'm going to get there soon. I can call ahead and let them know. And, you know, so they won't be wondering where I am. Right. So, so instead of just reminding myself I'm late, you know, I can actually take some steps to help myself, um, kind of reduce that stress. Right. So next, what we can do too is, um, and this is the important step, right? You know, looking at what God says about our thought, you know, is there a scripture to support or challenge the thought? And I suggest writing that down too, you know, so, uh, based on your investigation of your thought, you know, what is a true and helpful thought that you can think instead and write this down. And so when the distorted thought pops in your mind, remind yourself of the more helpful thought. So this is where you exercise your power over the thought. And this is where transformation really happens by investigating the thought and choosing the better thought. Because we're not powerless over our thoughts. You know, God has designed us with the will and the power to choose. You know, he says, uh, his word says, set before you life and death. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. So choose the life-giving thought and change your mind. So take a moment and download the worksheets that I'm providing. You know, there's a thought log. It's going to walk you through this process and the cognitive distortions list. It's going to help you identify if there's any kind of faulting or distorted thinking going on for you. Right? And hold your thoughts up to the word and change your mind. And come back for our final session next week where we explore how to meet the emotional needs in a life-giving way. God bless you all.